Well, welcome into Unsafe Spaces. I'm Randy Cross. Hope you enjoyed our new little open there done by Andrew Doyle, our producer. Um, a pretty consequential, I guess eventful is uh, one of the words you could use for the last oh, six, seven days since last we gathered. Um, and the number one thing that's gone on the last three days is the events of uh, in Las Vegas. The shooter... Uh, who shall not be named, at least not here. Um, the over 500 people injured, remember that's not shot, injured, uh, and 59 people confirmed so far um, dead. Um, I, by nature, I'll tell you up front, uh, am a conspiracy theory kind of person. I don't take news at its face value. That's why I've got to look at two or three different sources for most things unless i see it with my own my own eyes and sometimes i have to double check that um but yeah you know, my own thing my only point about all this uh and it's it's horrendous it's it's unthinkable you go through something like this um it's so typical of members of the media members in politics um even certain late night bozos decide to preach on stuff like this uh, and use these events as a platform, whatever. That says more about you than anything else. But um, it's just a time to see this, these events and, and be aware of them. Um, and also, be honest with you, um, see the, how good people are, how great this country is, and how good the people are in this country. And emphasize the positive sides of this, um, only because the negative sides are way, way too easy to dwell on, especially that one. But uh, when in doubt, I will give you one short piece of advice here. Um, always doubt authority. Always doubt a story. Always doubt everything you hear in, in the news because it's too easily manipulated. We've seen that uh, innumerable times in the last, oh, the last year, six months at least. So uh, thoughts and prayers. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if that bothers you. Thoughts and prayers um, to the people in Las Vegas, the victims, the families, everybody, the first responders. Um, just just an awful time. And hopefully everything um, progresses from here and we actually get our, the truth out of it. Highly doubtful, but hopefully that happens. Um, elsewhere, what happened this last week, uh, a couple of comings and goings uh, in one of the goings category. Uh, Hugh Hefner, he of the gentleman that established the Playboy magazine and the Playboy empire, as it's often referred to as. Yeah, now, little music, that fits the mood. Uh, he passed away. Great life, lived a long, long life. Now for younger people, probably 25 or younger, 30 or younger, uh, a magazine with scantily clad women sounds extremely mundane. Well, back in the time, this was pretty racy, as were supposedly their clubs. But Hugh Hefner passed away, uh, 90 plus, and like I said, a real good life. Another uh, coming and going, another one in the going category, and I don't mean checking out, taking a knee going. Uh, I mean, open the door and I am out of here. And that is O.J. Simpson was released from a Nevada prison um, late at night in the oh, come dark. Come on out. Okay. Be good. See you. Don't let the screen door hit you. Wow. But O.J. was out. Um, and one of the things that he did do um, was immediately want to do a couple of different things. I think one of the things he wanted to do was go to like a McDonald's and get a hamburger. But um, it's now Florida has said, you're not going to live here. Um, Nevada, that's his kind of home state now, I guess. Uh, but OJ is out. The juice is loose. And that's sort of, uh, that is what it is. Let's put it that way. Um, now on the, on the other end of that, Trump, did a, uh, and I mean President Trump, did a uh, heck of a job of referring to, again, Kim Jong-un uh, as now little rocket man in his advice to Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, and exactly how he should negotiate with this guy, as in 
Don't negotiate with Little Rocket Man. We're going to take care of business. And uh, it will not involve too much in the way of talking. Great point by the president. Great point in most of the people connected with his government right now. You've been talking to this guy for 25 years. He or his dad or his grandfather. What has that ever gotten for you? It's nothing. They've done pretty much what they want. Um, but it does bring into, I guess, into play in this instance, you know, what Trump's willing to do, what the president's willing to do. Um, and, and when he gets on, one thing he is, one thing he is willing to do is he will go to Twitter and he will exercise those fingers when it comes to tweeting. And that does get him in the news. We've got some new tweets in the past couple of minutes from the president. Let's put them on screen because they, they are shocking by any standard. The president says, I told Rex Tillerson, our wonderful secretary of state, that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with little rocket man, meaning the leader of North Korea. The president added, save your energy, Rex. We'll do what has to be done. Wow. Shocking. No, nah, not really. Consistent. Absolutely. Shocking. Nah, not even a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, now comes a section of uh, unsafe spaces here. We love to do this every week during football season. And that's going to be our uh, college football and NFL scores and sort of updates on what's happening in the world of sports. Well, in the world of football. The heck with sports. Just football. Um, college football had a heck of a week. Another great open, new one, uh, and, and you can't complain about some of the results that came out of this week, uh, especially if you're an Alabama fan. Ole Miss, you might have had a couple of complaints about that. Alabama beats Ole Miss 66-3, to and the score was as bad as the game. It was a, it was a complete butt-kicking from start to finish. And Alabama is, seems to be in that mode where they're getting better every week. And when they start getting better every week, and it's not week eight or week nine, it's not too early for them to lose, or not too late for them to lose. There's a chance you can get them, but you better get them early. Uh, next up was a team that looks like they may be possible, maybe they have a chance of getting Alabama, but if they do it, it wouldn't be until the SEC championship game, that's Georgia that shut out Butch Jones in Tennessee, 41 to nothing. And if you keep track of college football, especially Tennessee college football, uh, you are aware that Butch Jones has been under a lot of fire. Uh, quite a bit of fire, actually. Um, and rightfully so. This is his fifth year in Tennessee. It's his fifth year in the SEC East. And the other four, the other four years before this, Missouri won it twice and Florida won it twice. What's his excuse? None really, doesn't give any, but it doesn't bode well for the long-term employment possibilities of Butch uh, and his staff. Uh, next up on the college football scene was a game I particularly took some glee in. Uh, this was last Friday night. The USC Trojans went up to uh, the Palouse and played Washington State. Mike, Mike Leach and Washington State beat them. It was a great game. Uh, well executed. Uh, Sam Darnold had a couple of key turnovers, uh, one especially at the end of the game um, that was pivotal. Uh, Luke Falk, the quarterback for Washington State, had a very good game. So at the end of this game, um, SC was no longer number five, and Washington State is now ranked number 11 in the country. Congratulations uh, to Mike Leach and company. Anytime I see SC lose, I think it's a good day. Uh, next up on the school side is a team that might be the best team in the country that we just aren't going to learn too much about until maybe later in the year. That's Penn State. They beat Indiana 45-14. Uh, to 14. Saquon Barkley um, went crazy. He was running the ball. He was catching the ball. He was throwing the ball. He had a touchdown pass. This guy's making a uh, strong, strong argument that not only is his team one of the best in the country, or, and also maybe he is the best player in the country, which maybe means that he wins the Heisman Trophy at the end of the year. But keep in mind, for a running back to win that award these days, you've got to be on a national championship team. 
It's, it, it's not fair. That bar is just set a little higher for non-quarterbacks. And that'll be the reality. Maybe Saquon Barkley, maybe, maybe Penn State can pull that off. All right, next up here is uh, my quote of the week. Got to be this one. Got to be this one from Mike Leach of Washington State. Check it out. Coach, heck of a win. What's it like there right doing? now? It's a good win. There's a lot of people. It's like Woodstock, except everybody's got their clothes on. <laughs> well, listen. That's Mike Leach. Okay. Offensive genius winning with defense. Go figure. Uh, and, and something else, uh, we got the NFL and what went on with the NFL this week. It was uh, an exciting week at times. It was an unpredictable week at times in the NFL. Uh, the saddest story of the week in the NFL was the crowd that wasn't there for the San Diego Chargers. Uh, I'm sorry, the L.A. Chargers. You should probably want to go back to San Diego. But here in Atlanta, you had, uh, you had a very nice game that went on between the Buffalo Bills and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Atlanta had their last second going to score touchdown try. It's going to be good. But they were trying to do it without Mohamed Sanu and without Julio Jones. Didn't work out. And uh, Atlanta went down to Buffalo 23-17. to Hey, you're not going to be 16-0. and That's the reality. And who cares? The, the idea is not about winning all of them early. It's about winning the, excuse me, winning the last one. Next up in the NFL score scene is the Patriots, the New England Patriots, uh, a team that many people enjoy watching the lose. Uh, and they cooperated, and they lost to Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. And Cam Newton finally had a, a Cam Newton-like game, finally had a good game. And uh, rubbed it in a lot of people's faces and reminded people, uh, A, two things. A, the guy can dress really well. And B, he can be a real ass uh, when he gets to rub it in your face uh, to reporters. But we'll see how well he keeps playing. Uh, but he did on Sunday uh, against the uh, New England Patriots. And that was kind of fun to watch. How about the Los Angeles Rams? Yep, L.A. Rams, another team back in L.A. They played the Dallas Cowboys. They played America's team, and they won. Sean McVay is their head coach. He's the grandson of my former general manager at San Francisco, John McVay, and uh, he led this team. Uh, he and Goff, the quarterback, they've got a very nice defense. Um, they beat. They beat the Dallas Cowboys. They have the top scoring offense in the NFL right now. They are three and one and leading the West. It's a, it's a wonderful feel good story. As good as you have to feel for the Rams, like I said earlier, you gotta feel just as bad for the Chargers and the fact that they play in the soccer stadium somewhere down there south of Los Angeles and they can't fill it up. And they're actually tarping over seats in about a 25, 30,000 seat stadium. Now that, uh, you don't need much more of a definition of what sad is than that. Um, and, and something that went on this weekend that we've seen going on the last couple of weekends are, uh, I'll just call them the kneelers. The guys that have to kneel um, before the national anthem. The guys that have to kneel um, before any kind of a pregame ceremony. Um, and we've seen it. And a good amount of time, good amount of guys. Uh, the first week this all happened, and a couple of these shots are from those games, um, there were over 300 of this 1,600, so less than a quarter of the NFL took, participated in these kneel downs. Uh, this week, there were, I'll be nice and say about 100 league-wide that kneeled down. So a lot of the pressure, a lot of the disdain, they're starting to get the message that people don't like it. You know what? You can't have it both freaking ways. We're protesting. Yes, you're protesting social change, right? You want to make people aware of something that you're protesting. That's great. I think it's fantastic, and it's your constitutional right. But you can't pick something you say has nothing to do with the reason you're protesting. Every time somebody, it makes my head explode when I hear, I hear people say this. Well, no, 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 This has got nothing to do with the flag and the veterans and anything else. It's got nothing to do with that. This is about our protest. Yeah, but you're doing it during the anthem. 
that makes it about that. You can't have it both ways. Doesn't work like that. And I'll be glad when they stop doing that crap, personally. Um, now, big upset of the week. Got to show you this. And I mentioned it a little bit earlier. But Troy and LSU. They refer to themselves as the men of Troy. And man, were they. They built a 24 to 7 lead with that run right there at LSU at night in Baton Rouge. And then LSU scored a couple of meaningless touchdowns later, as it turned out, and they lost 24 to 21. The best thing about that afterwards, though, was after getting, picking up their $950,000 check, um, Troy kind of trolled, trolled, trolled LSU on, on, online. Uh, you know, thanks for the check. Need us to come back anytime. Just let us know. We'd be happy to get another $950,000. Congratulations to Troy. And, uh, man, tough, tough times ahead for Ed, Ed Ogeron and LSU in only the first five games or so of his tenure as head coach, uh, full-time head coach. Uh, there was a game Monday night. I don't know how many of you were aware of. And it was the uh, Washington Redskins. Uh, we're playing at Kansas City. And it ended kind of late, so if you didn't see it, I understand. Actually, if you stayed up long enough to watch Kansas City kick the field goal to put them ahead 23-20 to 20 and didn't see the last four seconds, I also understand. <laughs> but, man, did you miss a show. Um, this is what has always been referred to as uh, in the gambling industry, which I know nothing about, but as a backdoor cover. Um, Kansas City was favored by upwards of seven points in this game or so. Um, and the total points, the over-under, uh, was about 48 or so. So when it's 23-20 and you bet on Kansas City and the over, you lost twice. Big problem. Now, plays run, they fumble. Kansas City picks up the ball. Kansas City runs it in for a touchdown. Backdoor cover. 29-20. <laughs> Not only do you go over the point total of 48 to 49, uh, you cover that seven points I was talking about. And um, I tell you, that a game like that, that's living proof you should never bet on sports. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick note here uh, by way of, I guess, probably a monologue that I just want to talk about real fast. Um, and it's a th by way of a thank you. It's to a former orthopedic surgeon, a uh, former congressman from my area here in, in Atlanta area, uh, Tom Price, who recently resigned as the Secretary of Health and Human Services, um, was involved in quite a, quite a controversy, quite kind of a brouhaha, about taking private planes and things like that. It's typical swamp BS. Um, it's nothing that every single person in that swamp doesn't do. Um, it was leaked from the highest spots, and it was kind of a hit job. But the bottom line is he's not there anymore. But I just want to say thank you. Because when you look at guys like Tom Price, you look at guys like Rex Tillerson, you look, like all, you look at a lot of Steve Mnuchin, all these guys. Why on God's green earth would these people that are either multi-multi-millionaires or billionaires in some cases ever want to go into public service? Not to enrich themselves They're, and, and subject themselves to all this crap? Are you crazy? But... You know, this is for me is mainly a way for me to just say thank you. I appreciate the time that that Tom Price put in and I hope he has future successes and gets to, gets to kind of move on with his life and enjoy his life. And good luck to uh, some other friends that are still in D.C. and still working on trying to see if he can they can provide some actual health coverage and health care to America. All right. You ever ever wonder? Why the best and the brightest don't go into politics? This story, if you look into it much, is a great example. Next up, butt hurt of the week. How about that? Got some good stories for you here. There, check this out. 
Ah, still got our matador. Still got the motivator. We got a, a name and a, and a face, a uh, well-worked-on face, as a matter of fact, uh, that it was in the news uh, this week, and that's uh, Cher. She of the one name. Uh, well, actually, for a while, she had a, a last name, but she got divorced, so now she's just Cher. Uh, but she brought a suit uh, against a company and a billionaire, Patrick Soon Xiong, um, that she had held, I think around, from looking at it, about 300,000 shares of this company that this gentleman paid her a dollar and a half per share for. So she walked out with about $450,000 in the deal. Um, problem is, not too long afterwards, that company was worth over a billion dollars uh, because of a HIV AIDS drug breakthrough. And she's suing um, them, the owners or the people that she sold her stock stocks to, uh, for withholding information and taking advantage of her. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I just think that's kind of fun. That's I know that's mean of me, but you know that's okay. Uh, next up, and this is a little strange for those of you that don't really like strange. Um, you may have a problem with this, but again, yeah, say la vie. Um, there is a a woman uh, over in the UK who had. There's a certain kinds of surgery people are doing now. Let's call them nips, nips and tucks. And nips and tucks are not always done around eyes or down in the neck or other parts up here. It's, there's some done down below. And, you know, kind of your more meatier parts. And this surgery was done to this woman. And she had designer jewelry made out of her leftovers from the surgery. Now, we won't bore you with the kind of strange-looking, shriveled-up leftovers part, but they did make some kind of cool um, sir, uh, jewelry out of this. So there's an example. See, a little gold-encrusted, that whole thing. Would that count, do you think, as a conversation piece? My, where'd you get that? What's that made of? That'll halt a few conversations dead in their tracks. But good for you. If you can afford the surgery, good on you. If actually you have so much money you can afford to take the results of that surgery and make jewelry out of them, better on you. Go for it. A little strange, but go for it. All right, last, last part of our butt hurt of the week. Again, we're going to mention uh, this gentleman, and that's our guy O.J. Uh, O.J. Simpson, when he got out of jail... He looked at her. He took all his prison stuff with him. Smart move. Now, this isn't actually a picture of him and all his stuff that says, you know, box says OJs and whatnot. But it's not a bad idea to take all your stuff with you because you know this is going to prevent one thing and one thing only. Yep. You're not going to have stuff on eBay where you can buy it. I don't know. Who owns those gloves now? Because they didn't fit. And they did acquit. But O.J.'s out, and O.J.'s got all his stuff with him. So for those of you that always wanted to see uh, if you could have O.J.'s pillow from prison or some of his other personal items, he's got them with him, and they will not be available online, at least not yet, until maybe he needs more money. Then you can get them for a whole lot of money. All right, let's go move on now to real-world news. All right, great new open. Again, nice job uh, by Andrew on the new open. And uh, real world news. How about we start with, uh, and we've only got a couple of these to, this week. We're going to start with one around an area I spent a lot of time at when, when I was young. The beaches of Southern California. And there are some gorgeous beaches in Southern California. But this story here is about Orange County beaches. Uh, they're being beset by mysterious, nauseating or odor. Demanding answers, the citizens are, as to what is the cause of these odors? Where do they come from? And for those of you that may spend time at the beaches, I mean, 
I didn't grow up at the beach because my family didn't have money like that, but I had transportation. I could get to the beach, so I got to spend time on the beach. Um, beaches be stinky. There's dead fish, there's seaweed, there's oil in Southern California. There are, there are refineries and plants. There are power plants. There's a lot of stuff near the ocean in Southern, in Southern California that can make stuff stink. And we're not even getting into the people yet because, you know, people be stinking pretty good too. So Southern California and Orange County has got a stinky beach problem. What else is new? Huh? It's been there for a while. I mean, I'm older than dirt, and it was stinky back when I was at the beach. All right, let's go on to the next story, and that's something that just kind of caught my eye. Um, and, and that's these new corporate sort of footprints that are starting to be out there. Um, the multi-billion dollar corporate campus. That doesn't sound quite right, and it even sounds weirder when you see it. Did you see the movie The Circle? Don't worry, not many people did. It's another one of those summer bombs that have happened this year. But Apple built this thing uh, in, in Northern California, and it is a circle, circular building. And there are companies like Apple and Google and others that have decided to sort of congregate their companies in these big areas. Um, and I find that personally kind of scary. Now, this is an older version of the same thing. That version there was in the 1950s. This is the new Apple facility. Google's got one like this. Um, now, we always hear complaints about unchecked government. We always hear complaints. Who, who's, who's checking on these guys? They control the vertical. They control the Internet. They control our electronics. Who the hell's checking on them? You know, the Facebooks among us, the Twitters among us. Everyone assumes, oh, that's all on the up and up. Like I said earlier, I'm kind of a conspiracy guy. I get a little uncomfortable around people that are worth that much money, truly. Or at least their motives, I question. All right, let's, uh, let's go to speaking of motives and speaking of questionable. It's a perfect time to go in a tinfoil hat. No other way to put it, our first story for tinfoil hat, China's been holding out. China has known things for a long time about what's really on the moon, and they've been hiding it. Check out this video. Got a few pictures. Got a pretty good view of some of the stuff that's going on. Yeah. See, that's, that's, a, that's a zoom out. We're going to zoom in. The below is similar to many that I have seen myself. It seems that the Chinese who took the photo have confirmed that aliens exist. The Chinese probably <laughs> have already had direct contact with these aliens. Indians. The photos have to be reported nuclear show clear impact craters huh? and remains of buildings caused by explosions in an effort by NASA to destroy the truth. Where is the that truth Mojave? Is that NASA is hiding a very dark secret. There is an alien base on the moon. However, until new missions are sent publicly to the site, the it pyramid? is impossible to confirm any theory in this regard. There is nothing left but to wait and see that there is truth in all this. Wow. Is that a pyramid there? Man, these Chinese, we got to keep an eye on them. They, I, I, you know, nuclear bombs, blasts, buildings, bases. Somebody's got too much time on their hands. All right, next up on the uh, tinfoil hat alert here, and tinfoil hat section for, uh, for us, um, is something that came up that I, I basically had to say, I haven't seen many of these. And in looking through the internet this last week, I came across this story on YouTube. And well, let's just roll this and, and give you a little bit of an idea of what, what, what you got in store. I go to New York a lot. Mysterious metal towers I haven't have started seen these. popping up across New York, but no one knows why. The bizarre structures are being erected around tunnels and bridges around the city. Authorities have not revealed why they are being constructed or what huh. purpose they serve. 
resident Jose Lugo said they went up soon after toll booths in Brooklyn were demolished. The towers are part of a $100 million project led by the Metropolitan Transportation hey, it's a floating Authority, subway. MTA. It has refused to offer an explanation and residents are now growing fearful over their purpose. <laughs> New <laughs> yeah, Yorkers are now terrified think? they will be exploited for facial recognition across the city. Yep. More are being erected, but they still do not know what surveillance technology is included inside. When pressed, MTA Chief Joel Hoda would not reveal their capabilities. Hey, is it me or is that voice they use, that lady's voice or the guy in the, the, the earlier one about the Chinese? Does that make them either, even weirder stories when you hear that robotic, you know, computer-generated voice talking to you? But that is a weird thing about those towers. And I'm going to have to start looking out for those when I go to New York. Because supposedly, I mentioned this to people yesterday when I was in New York, and they said, oh, yeah, I see those all the time. Well, what the hell are they? <laughs> Who thought that was a good idea? I don't know. It's uh, Just keep an eye on that. And I... Next week, I'll have my tinfoil hat on. I'll find out more about this story. Uh, last one in the tinfoil hat category. Um, yeah, pretty simple. Pretty, pretty clean. Um, you're flying. I fly a lot. You know, I'm on, what, four, five, six planes a week. Uh, I've never had this happen, though. And I don't know if you have, but when you look out the window and you're sitting near the wing... It's always nice to look out and be greeted by, I don't know, a real engine? Not, what's flapping? That's not a good thing. When I see an engine on a plane, I don't want to see flapping. And that's the problem. It was an Air France flight. And, and they had some problems on this flight. Check this out. We regret any inconvenience the sudden cabin movement might have caused. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to the, the great people at the movie uh, Airplane. Um, that was. Could you imagine being on a plane and part of the engine just fla falls apart? And this is a flight from Paris to the U.S., not much between Paris and the U.S. Charles Lindbergh was the first one to do that, and they're nothing but water. So shut down one of your engines and limp on in. Keep an eye on this story because this stuff tends to happen way too often. In fact, later on in the week after this happened, I saw this, this came on again as a, a story, a reference, and a picture of that engine um, in a story about uh, chemtrails and how that plane was actually one of those chemtrail planes that sprays stuff on us to keep us all under control. If it's supposed to keep us under control, they're not doing a very good job. That's all I'm saying. That's it for Tinfoil Hat. Let's move into good feel-good story of the week. My man, on the couch, no towel, eating watermelon? Man, where were you raised? My wife would throw a fit if you're eating watermelon on her couch without a towel, dripping that stuff all over. Come on. Get your stuff together. Hamster, guinea pig, whatever you are. Um, so this story is here out of Atlanta, actually. It's about a young lady named Montana Brown. Montana Brown was a cancer survivor, two-time cancer survivor. And um, she now works at Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Let's listen to the story and just enjoy this because this will make you smile. This week, 24-year-old Montana Brown started a new job as a pediatric nurse in the Aflac Cancer Center of Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Hey, Kennedy. It is a place she knows well. Your mom's going to have to let you get something. This young nurse is a two-time cancer survivor herself, first diagnosed at the age of two with a rare type of childhood cancer affecting her muscles and bones, and then again at age 15. Both times she was treated at the very same hospital where she now has returned to work. She remembers that team. The nurses here, the love that they showed me just really helped me and pushed me to want to become a nurse. Anything you want to talk about? Montana knows what it's like to be young and up against a battle. Being in the hospital is really scary sometimes. It was a calling she knew early on. 
I would always say I'm only going to nursing school to do pediatric oncology. Like I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to work anywhere else. I'm going to school strictly to do pediatric oncology. Holding her new badge tonight, a dream realized. I'm not walking through the doors as a patient anymore. I'm walking through as a staff member and I get to be an idea of hope and inspiration. That is a that is an example of hope and inspiration. Fantastic. Fantastic job by Montana Brown. And, uh, you know, I, you can't have enough stories like this because this kind of these stories kind of refresh your battery um, as to what's really good about a lot of people. All right. want to remind you uh, how to find us. You can find us in a lot of various places. You can find us on SoundCloud, Twitter, YouTube, heck, all over the place. Um, or go to unsafespacesusa.com. And if you have any suggestions or whatnot, send it to producer at unsafespacesusa.com. Thanks. That'll do it for this week. Let's move right on to a great part. It's the end part. It's our happy trails. Happy trails.